Um, welcome to Luke 17. Again, not the easiest of passages to look at, but let's have a little read through and see what we can look at together. Um, the passage builds up from um, this continued picture about actually which brother are we, whether we're more like the older brother or the younger brother, whether we think we're sorted or whether we know that we're in need of God's healing, rescue and help, whether we, whether we um, believe we can get there by our own means or whether we're um, trusting in God for our rescue. Um, and the passage we had looked at yesterday um, ended with um, the idea of um, Lazarus, the poor man that was known by God, who was a beggar and yet went to heaven, and the rich man who seemed to have everything but actually ended up in hell. The challenge of, of, of what are we living for? The fleeting existence of our temporary, temporary life or are we building for an eternity that we can't see? Where are we investing our time, our energy, and our resources? What future are we building? Are we building up our treasure in heaven where rust and moth, where rust and moths can't can't destroy? Or are we building them up here on earth? Are we really, you know, what does it mean when Jesus says the first shall be last and the last shall be first? You know, is he talking about a rich man and Lazarus? I thought, what does that mean for you and for me? And then we look at um, Luke 17, and Jesus said this to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone to, through, through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown to sea with a millstone tied around, tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourself. Jesus has been attacking quite firmly the, um, the Pharisees, and he's saying to his followers, I don't want to see history repeating itself. I don't want to see you becoming, um, lording it over people and um, causing people to stumble with, um, um, with yeah, shame and guilt. And um, yeah, he talk, Jesus talks elsewhere about, you know, you load them up with, with baggage and do not lift a finger to help them. You know, Jesus is saying, I don't want to see people stumble. Actually, if you cause people to stumble, it'd be better for you to Jump in the sea with a millstone tied around your neck. Yeah, it's a pretty harsh words. So watch yourselves. Jesus then says this, If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back saying, I repent, even then you must forgive them. You know, sometimes we get very much like, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm, I'm done with forgiving. Um, you know, sometimes we don't, we're not very good at forgiving. And if you're anything like me, sometimes bitterness can creep in. Sometimes we can get resentful. Sometimes we can, yeah, sometimes people just being mean or horrible can wear us down. Interestingly, he says, if a brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. Actually, let's have the conversation. There's nothing worse when sometimes you inwardly seethe. And you don't say anything, but there's something inside you that's just not right, and it just feels horrible. So you say, no, have it out. Talk. If they repent, forgive them. And even if they keep on messing up, keep on forgiving them. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And I think that's a, a good prayer. Lord, increase my faith. Because I read all these bits about how to live for Jesus, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm just struggling to... <laughs> Just get through the day sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I, I, you know, um, I sometimes use the word rubbish Christian, which is a really bad phrase, actually. I don't think that's true. Because um, actually all of us, are, it's, not, it's not about what we do, it's about what Jesus has done. But a great prayer, increase our faith. Help us, help us get through it. Help us to be more fruitful. Help us to be more like you, Jesus. And Jesus replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can save this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the tree, in the sea, and it will obey you. Actually, our faith, even though we can be, feel fragile, even though we can feel broken, even though we can feel fallible, yeah, God working through us can do amazing things. The Bible says God can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. That's Ephesians um, 3.20. Even as small as a mustard seed can change, can change stuff. So, you know, actually, sometimes we can feel daunted. We can feel like, a, you know, God can't possibly use me. But the truth is God can 
and God does. And even if we have a, a small faith side of the mustard seed, God can still use that. You don't have to be salted and perfect toothed and gleaming and shiny and hovering above the floor for God to use you. He uses ordinary people like you and me, ordinary broken people like you and me. Jesus then uses a picture of servants um, and it's basically saying, you know, kind of um, that servants don't get extra for serving because um, that's what's expected of them. And almost this sort of, Jesus is almost attacking a sort of culture of entitlement. I'm entitled to be um, important, get status. In, the, the entitlement really ties in back with the rich man's attitude towards Lazarus. He felt entitled. I think sometimes when we feel entitled as Christians, that's a very dangerous place to be. And the thing with entitlement is it just creeps in very subtly and can cause all sorts of damage. As we think about entitlement, we, it, it gets challenged by the next passage. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going to a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at the distance and called out, Jesus, master, have pity on us. Jesus went to them and said, go show yourselves the priest. And they went and they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw his healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice, and threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Again, this story of, um, of the people that should get it, don't, and the people that don't get it, the people who, who probably feel like they're written off, are the ones who are always included. Interestingly, this guy had probably had no bargaining chips. He couldn't say, well, I'm a good Jew, because he... Wasn't he was a Samaritan? I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm just a I'm just a man who's really sick with a horrible disease. And I just said to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have pity on me. Or as other translation says, Jesus, have mercy on me. Just come to God and say, God, have mercy on me, help me. God, I need you. Sometimes is all we need to ask. Jesus said, We're not all ten, le ten lepers cleansed. Where are the other nine? And then he says, get rise and go and your faith has made you well. But I think when I think of this story, one of the things I think of is, is about my attitude of gratitude. I realize that so often I take what God does for me for granted. I don't remember or treasure or, or, or hold on to God's faithfulness enough. And sometimes I need to remind myself that God has been faithful, that God, despite all the bits that haven't worked out right and the bits I'm sad about and the bits that are painful, that God has been good and God is good. And I need to say thank you at times. So often we can live in a world where we, our glasses are half full. Think about what we haven't got rather than what we have got half empty. I mean, sometimes we live in a world where our glasses are half empty rather than half full. And sometimes God says, let's change your perspective. Realize what he's done for you. And then we end with a passage that's, again, a little bit odd. They're talking about the kingdom of God, this idea that Jesus' big idea, really, of his preaching is the kingdom of God. And he's saying you won't just see it as in here or there, but it's actually in the midst. Often the kingdom of God is, isn't like, you know, a, a specific place at a specific time, but it's actually all amongst us. It's happening right now. It's in our midst. And... Um, it says about false Christ appearing and, um, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then he talks about, I mean, the, the, the conversation moves towards end times. Um, and it's talking about, you know, it talks about, first of all, Noah um, will be as in the Son of Man. People are eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage. Right up to day, and Noah into the dark. And then the, came, the flood came and destroyed them all. It was in the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, selling, buying, planting, building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down and destroyed it all. Both are horrible, tough judgment passages that lots of us find really hard and difficult to cope with. But it's that idea that normal life is happening. We're going about our daily business forgetting the fact that the reality of God is God is coming back. It is happening one, time, one day. There will be a point where, where there is reckoning, there is justice, the truth 
will, will transform that God is returning. We often have these t-shirts and things that saying Jesus is coming to look busy and we sort of make it into a bit of a joke. But the truth is that we, the Christians have believed that Jesus is returning. And actually what's going to happen to each one of us. The passage here is, is, is quite challenging. It seems to have ideas of some being rescued and, and some missing out, um, which is a scary thing. It talks about one is in a bed, two people in the bed, one goes up, one is rescued, one doesn't. One who, one who, um, gardening grain, one who's walking in the field. That idea that, you know, actually around us all the time, there is both death and salvation and God is wanting us to choose salvation. And Jesus says this, whoever tries to keep their life will lose it and whoever loses their life some versions will say, for my sake, we'll preserve it. It ends where they said, well, where, Lord? And he replied, where there is a dead body, there vultures will gather. That actually we need to be looking out for the signs of the times. Seeing what God's doing and saying, God, have mercy. Work through me. I'm, I can't claim to be sorted. I can't claim to have all the answers. I don't want to cause anyone else to start to fall but I'm going to try and follow you faithfully. I'm going to realize that you are coming back and I want to be ready. I want to be alert. I want to be in the right place at the right time doing the right things. I want to live my life your way. I want to do it how you want me to do my life. So there we have Luke 17.